myself. My name is Preeti Casey. I am the project manager for this project. You can reach me at 817-392-5467 and my email address is preeti.casey at fortworthtexas.gov. The inspector for pro this project is Steven Martinez. You can reach him at 682-432-5485 and his email address is steven.martinez at fortworthtexas.gov. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Um, and I would like to open the floor for some questions. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can unmute yourself. I think we have Daniel here from, or I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong, from Council District 3. Yes, I am here. Did you want to say anything? Um, no, I didn't. I'm so sorry that I popped on just a few moments late. I have a couple of kiddos and I was making dinner and <laughs> realized what time it was, but no, I'm just glad to be here. Thank you all for having me. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jan, do you have any questions? Jan Brignac? Yes, ma'am. Uh, will we be able to get a copy of the presentation? I myself got yeah. on a little bit late too, so I didn't see the very beginning. So uh, will we, we will be able to see a copy of it. Yes, I make a PDF out of it and that's going to be posted to that project page. Okay. Um, just to do the 103414 on the uh, search bar on the home page. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That's all I have for right now. Okay, uh, I've got Dylan Vasquez. Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Just uh, okay. happy to be part of the team. Hopefully we can get right. things done. All right, we have a Gary. Yes, ma'am. I'm good. Okay. How about George Crawford? Uh, no questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Joe Trammell, Tarrant County. Yes. Uh, Yes, I'm here. I've, I've got a couple of questions, I guess, and, and just just curious. Are, when will they, you know, how the roadway, actual roadway closures, when are those anticipated within the time frame of the construction project? Are they going to have any roadway closures? How are they going to do those? Are they going to be, you know, one lane at a time? I, and also, I'd like to get a copy of the construction plans because that'll probably tell, probably answer my questions, but also I'd like to see kind of where they're going to lay this sewer line out within the Alito Road right away, if if that's still the case. You know, they went back and forth with that concept, so I'm not sure exactly where it's going to be at this time. The sewer line is going to be in Alito Road. We are going to have a pre-con meeting probably next week, and I will uh, forward you the invitation, and you are most welcome to join. And during that time, the contractor is going to submit us the traffic control plans that we can go over and also the tentative time frame, like when the road is going to be closed and all the details. That would be great. Rick, Joseph, y'all have anything y'all want to add to me while I'm on here represent, we're representing, but with Tarrant County? Yeah, I got a boatload of questions and I'm confused about some things. Go ahead. <clears throat> Part, my number one question is, why didn't you continue on across Markham Ranch Road and stop on the east, on the west side of it versus on the east side? So the phase two is going to be uh, because of the easement issues. We are going to acquire easements from Dry Ranch, and right now we are going to condemnation. So that is the reason why we kind of divided it to two phases. And okay, I understand the reason why you did it, but that's just my mm -hmm. concern because you're stopping in a bad place right there to the east of Markham Ranch Road. Because then when you do Markham Ranch Road, unless you're going to bore under it, you're closing that intersection. Am I mistaken in assuming that or am I right? So, intersection on Markham Ranch and Elder Road, is that what you're saying? Yes. That needs to be closed? Well, when you go when you go across uh, when you go across uh, Markham Ranch Road, with I guess Phase Two, that's mm -hmm. why it should continue Phase One and then just stubbed it out in the right away on the opposite side instead of where you're stopping at because 
as much traffic that goes down Alito Road and goes down Markham Ranch Road, and then at some point we're going to be working on Markham Ranch Road, that's going to cause a huge bottleneck and a lot of inconvenience because there's a lot of traffic that go up and down those two roads. Okay. Trudy, can I say something? Yes, ma'am. Like we, we talked about this about a week ago and realized that we were going to need some traffic control. So we reached out to precinct six, John Siegel. So he's aware of, of what we're going to be doing out there. So he'll be on top of it as far as uh, helping with the traffic control. John Siegel, precinct six constable. Okay. But. I understand that, but that area you're talking about and working in belongs to precinct one, which is which is myself and Joe Trammell. I'm the assistant director of field ops, and he's the director of field ops. And you said you are with yeah. Tarrant County, right? Yes. And you John, said there's, a, have... there's a yeah, the constable, the constable precinct six in Tarrant County is going to be assisting you with traffic control. We made him aware of the project, so he will be um, part of the traffic control if needed. Yeah, hey, Preeti, this is Josh with Dunaway. Um, mm -hmm. So for the phase two portion, we will be boring under Markham Ranch Road, so there's no closures that are uh, proposed for that future phase two project. Of course, there okay. will be some coordination needed for traffic, but uh, for construction traffic, as they would need to be crossing that road from time to time. So, obviously, there'll still need to be some uh, coordination with traffic control, but it is proposed to bore. And uh, as Pretty was mentioning, the, the restriction was needing to stay outside a dry ranch. So, unfortunately, we were kind of dictated by what easements were available as far as the phasing of the. Uh, the end of the project, although ideally, as this 1st phase gets wrapped up, we'll be moving right into construction of phase 2 uh, more or less seamlessly uh, would be the best case scenario. So, uh, work just continues from 1 phase to the next. So, so I joined late, I live right on Alito road. How is this construction going to affect my property? Are you going to be um, so, clearing up my fence, my driveway, all of that? And where does yeah. the money come that's doing this? So the, the sewer line is going to be on the north side of your property. And um, there will be always access for to your property. The only, uh, the other the road will be closed to through traffic during construction, but you all will always have access to your property. And the contractor and inspector will coordinate with you during construction. What do you mean this, the uh, sewer line's going to go north of my property? Oledo Road, north of the Oledo Road. Yes, I am. I live on the north side of Oledo Road. Sorry, south side of Oledo Road. It's going to be ex exactly opposite. Of the okay, Humboldt so we were, we were told that the, the, on the south side of Oledo Road, that was the railroad easement and we, that, that you guys were unable to utilize that space. So that's not true. No, it will be in the right of way. It will be in the public right of way. Uh, it's not going to be in the railroad easement. It is going to be in the street. The actual street itself. Yes. This is Jan Brignac. I do have a question. Are you going to put this in on the railroad side, but in the street? That is correct. I, so the the our neighbors on Alito Road, they won't have any of their property damaged or accessed at all because they're on the the north side of Alito Road. Uh, not, nothing is anticipated at this time because most of the construction is going to be on the south side. Josh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, that's that's correct. So, um, yeah, so the, the alignment goes on the south side, the south uh, uh, side of the Lido Road right of way. It's on the opposite side of your driveways going into your properties. 
not intensive. So the design intention and uh, coordinating with the contractor, um, our directives to them is to maintain that uh, northern lane of Alito Road as for, and provide that for access. So there shouldn't be any interruption to the lane of uh, Lido Road and your driveways. Um, ultimately, though, once construction is complete, Alito Road will be completely re rebuilt. And so we do have quantities in there, or we have, uh, yeah, we have quantities in the plans in the contract to reconstruct your driveways if needed. So there, there's a chance that your, your drives would be up, upgraded once Alito Road gets re reconstructed. So if someone, widen that road? There's I'm no sorry, widening Steve. to the road. No, it'll be same same width as it is existing. So some so somebody mentioned you know the amount of traffic that comes through here. So you may you made the the commissioner or whoever you stated. Uh, sorry, I don't remember aware of the issue that you may need help with traffic control. But you're you're paring it down to a single length. You're paring it down to a single lane through here, right up next to our driveway. Let's go to the door and let's go to the garage. The road is going to be closed for through construction. The only access will be for the residents over there. Okay, do y'all realize how many people come down Alito Road from Alito? Have, oh, let me ask, let me rephrase that. Have y'all actually seen the area this is going to be in? This is just going to be her talking. I'm sorry. Sorry, somebody, someone was talking to me. So, my question is, those of you that are on the planning committee, have y'all actually been on this road to see where the construction is going to be. Uh, I would uh, refer this question to Josh. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yes, of course, we're familiar with the, um, the traffic and it, it will have a significant Im impact on the. The, the traveling public, um. You know, the details of the traffic control plan and the detour are in the construction documents and then the contractor is responsible for creating a detailed construction uh, traffic control plan with their overall construction uh, schedule and timeline as well. So, um, but ultimately the, the section of Alito Road is um, proposed to be closed to, to, through traffic uh, during the duration of construction. Of course, the element, the component of the actual closure may be much shorter than that. So it's closed to through traffic, but only maybe three or 400 feet of that would actually be under construction with the remainder of the roadway being undisturbed. However, between Markham Ranch Road and Chapman School Road or 2871, um, that's gonna more or less be closed to through traffic for the, for the duration of the construction. So construction is gonna be almost a year Correct. Yes, that is correct. So, where will they be detoured? Will they be detoured for phase one down Markham Ranch Road? Those yes. coming from Alito? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is the plan. Markham Ranch okay. Road goes through I 20 and then also Chaplin School Road. Okay, and then those coming down um, 2871, they will have to go down to 20 and. <clears throat> To go west? Yes. Okay. Wow. And there will be flaggers also um, to direct the traffic and also the message board is going to be there. So, yeah, to direct the, the traffic message, as well. I'm sorry, is the message board going to be uh, towards the Bembrook area? Uh, I'll let uh, Adam answer this question. Adam is our contractor. Adam, you're here. Yes. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a total of five message boards that get put out to let everybody know. And they'll, you know, the city's got that set up for those to go out at the beginning and kind of notify everybody about 
what's to happen and then kind of provide that information on the on the detours. There's a total of five. I'm driving down the highway 80 miles an hour, but they've got a very detailed traffic control plan that lays all that out as to where they go. So what happens to the neighbors on Alito Road like after construction stops for the day? What's going to only prevent or allow those neighbors to get in, but no one else if it's going to be closed. Yeah, there, there will always be a, a lane for them. You know, we may even have to do some temporary asphalt paving to kind of widen the road at, at locations to maintain a width, uh, you know, for access. But, you know, there'll be lots of signs and barricades up at the ends and, and all the, the detour signage and everything. And hopefully, you know, for the most part, everybody will get the point, you know, that they need to go around with the exception of those residents right there. Um, but it'll be opened up for the residents. So if you're destroying the south lane, if you're going to add asphalt, that means you are encroaching on our side of the road. Yeah, I mean, the way that that's set up, with, and I think the city can speak to it a little bit better than I can, but they've got a certain, you know, right away width going down through there and you know with where that line is running on the south side of the street you know and that line is like 25 foot deep it's a pretty deep line and you know it'll take a big excavator there'll be lots of heavy equipment putting pipe in um and you got to put up you know barricades so that it's safe you know for our people and and for you guys traveling you know everybody around there we got to Depending on where the center line of that pipe is, you know, we may have to put some temporary asphalt in, but they've got it in the contract set up to completely rebuild that road from from one end to the other of our of our pipe. And they need, like somebody said earlier, they've actually got quantity in the contract. So if we damage some of your driveway, you know, which it's possible just with that heavy equipment working there, you know, if it gets cracked, broken, whatever, we'll have to we'll have to replace it and then we'll, we'll have to tie it in to the, the new elevations, uh, which they're really the gonna see. It's gonna happen because heavy yeah. equipment oh, yeah. has turned around in my driveway and already broken yep. off a corner of my driveway. I, I completely agree. And that's why they, they, you know, the city's got that set up in the contract. So that that is the plan. So, 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 we'll if, have... so if that pipe is 25 feet deep, how wide of a hole do you plan on digging down the center of a uh, 10 foot wide lane, if that's how wide it is. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it ranges, but it's about six feet, you know, at the bottom and, you know, maybe eight foot up at the top, something like that. There's, you know, trench boxes shoring, if, if, you, if you're familiar with that kind of stuff. So we'll have trench boxes um, that protect the workers and allow the guys to put the pipe in and put the rock around it, compact it. Uh, do it safely and all that, but it'll definitely be six to eight foot wide in there. Uh, my my name is Rick Hollers. I'm next door to Steve. I couldn't get on the the webinar, but uh, so any damage that we incur from your heavy equipment, you'll be replacing that. Correct. Is there um, any other alternative to putting this sewer line in here uh, to where you could tie in up at Interstate 20 in Markham Ranch where they already have sewer? I can speak to that, Preeti, but this is, you know, we're, we're limited by what gravity provides us for sanitary sewer versus, you know, you could collect it and pump it, but uh, gravity sewer is, uh, has to follow along the flow lines of the, the areas where the water goes, which is in this case. Um, and uh, speak, speaking, of, yeah. speaking of where the water goes, uh, in the event that we have heavy rains down here and during your construction and it causes flooding or a lot of mud, how will you compensate for that? Because we have a we have a culvert just to the west of my property line that drains underneath Alito Road for drainage, and if that gets all torn up, then there may be a drainage issue. 
Because if yeah. you're going to add asphalt on the north side of Alito Road, you are encroaching into the drainage, fu our functional drainage from our property. So, so how will one, it be? So the contractor will submit a stormwater pollution prevention plan uh, during construction that utilizes the best management practices uh, to protect the stormwater runoff quality during construction. So, so I so kind of yeah. don't know because they haven't submitted what they plan to do. They have not yet. We are going to have a pre-construction meeting next week, and uh, after that, they will submit the the, the SW3P documents. Yeah, the construction documents have recommended and suggested locations for erosion and control and prevention um, implementation. So that includes silt fence, inlet protection, rock check dams along the culverts or the in the bar ditches to make sure that. Sedimentation does not travel beyond the, the footprint of the project. Um, so that those suggested locations will be refined and uh, put into a plan that the contractor will be required to uh, submit, as pre said, and reviewed by the city. And then that's what they're going to be held to as they progress through the project. Um, so it, it's always the intention of uh, the contractor and the city to protect waterways, protect um, from from uh, construction related downstream sediment sedimentation uh, from occurring off this off the project site. So uh, where does the money come that's paying for all this? Where do you want to speak? To yeah, that? yeah, sure. Yeah, it comes from our water and sewer funds. So another question that I have is, and you might have covered this before I was able to um, join, but what is being developed in and around our area that is causing the need for this sewer extension service? That Walt Ranch development going in, they've they've got to provide them with sewer. So Sorry, Walt's I was in mute. Uh, yeah. So if you look into the slide that I'm showing right now, the future development is within Walsh Ranch, Veal Ranch, and also potentially Dry Ranch that requires sewer extension for the service. So I guess my, my concern, Walsh Ranch, I, I don't know how far it goes, but I was under the impression it was on the north side of 20. So does Walsh Ranch come over closer to Markham Ranch? Going to Alita Road. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's north and south of of twenty and, and, and thirty. Really. If you look into this map that I'm showing, yes, Walsh Ranch is like right here. If you see this bound, if you can see my mouse. Okay. Yes, I can see it. Yeah. That's so, but do you know what's being developed there? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's subdivision. I'm not sure. You think it's more houses though? Probably so. Not Single. warehouses or um industrial i don't think so yeah because most of the like walsh ranch dry ranch are subdivisions like houses okay. but yeah mm -hmm. so let me ask you this on the others on the um east side of markham ranch road there is an asphalt company mm -hmm. okay that i don't think we are it's supposed to be light industrial on that side, and I don't, this is probably not y'all's area of expertise, but that looks more like more than light industrial to me. So how do we know what's being developed on that side of Markham Ranch Road? I, we've got a real concern about more warehouses and industrial when we're a rural area. I don't mind more houses, but we don't want you know, we'd like to know what's being developed on Markham Ranch Road, and I think Mike Dry owns that. I'm not sure. Yes, ma'am. Uh, until they submit like a preliminary plan, we won't be able to know. Okay. But I mean, if they have already submitted, you can reach out to Development Services Department uh, if you have any questions on those area. Develop Services Department. Yeah, Development Services. Development Services. Okay. I just. 
I just wasn't sure if, if there was something that was already in the works that was causing mm -hmm. this sewer extension or or what, if you were familiar with any of the, the lots being sold. Uh, so the, yeah, the, the only thing that I'm familiar with is Walsh Ranch, Dry Ranch um, that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, besides that, I'm not aware of anything, but if needed, if you would like more information about it, then yeah, you can always reach out to Development Services Department. Okay. They would know more, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. What is their daily work schedule going to be? Yeah, I would defer that question to Adam. Five days a week, seven days a week. Uh, it's for the most part, it's it's five days a week. So some Saturdays, especially if there was like a rain day during the week, you know, a lot of times the guys work on Saturday to make up for a rain day, so they get a full five days. But um, definitely not on Sundays. What time will I uh, start and finish each day? For the most part, it's usually like seven to six. Like that. Okay. What kind of noise level will we have? It, it'd be noisy. There'll be big, big excavator. There's a 390 uh, cat. It's the main, main excavator that, that digs that rock through there. Um, there'll be loader and things like that. But, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of you know, I, driving through there a lot of you guys houses are way off far from the road i don't know that it'll be too too bad um for you guys kind of sit back up in there but it's crazy the things that we can hear over here yeah no, I, can imagine. Yeah. I, would agree with the, I would agree with that the houses that have the ponds in front of them but us right. that are closer to 2871 are considerably closer to that gotcha yeah, yeah. Well, the good, the good uh -huh. news is, that, you know, and I don't know if, if it helps you guys. I mean, the, the job will take about a year from start to finish, but that, that, includes, that includes a lot of, you know, prep time at the beginning in the early months, working on tunnels and stuff that are over there towards the east end of the job before you ever get into Alito Road. And then, you know, the, the reconstruction of the road. You know, we're hoping that as far as the time frame to actually put the the pipe in the ground, that's probably about six months. Um, so is that, that, one, is that is that one year for both phase one and two? No, that's just phase one. They haven't been the city hasn't bid phase two yet. Whoa. When they finish that, are there going to be uh, sewer lids, you know, encased in concrete? Along Alito Road, yeah, they do like a concrete collar. Yeah. Yep. Are there, are, are there going to be vent pipes along this road that affect the air quality? Uh, so they, if I remember right, and uh, uh, Pretty or Josh can probably clarify this for me, but I believe that uh, some of those manholes on that job have vents, but they they run over to the side of the road somewhere, and then they do. Uh, the city has a. Uh, uh, odor control units like a ball valve check valve type thing that hangs off the vent um, that they put this odor control stuff in there that's supposed to help with that um, i can't remember i'm pretty sure it's not all the valves i want to say or manholes because um, there's like 20 or 21 manholes on the job and i want to say there's seven or nine vents so i can't remember where they all go um, but the city does use the the odor control stuff on their vents how visible are these things? Because if I decide I'm going to sell my house and it's got this hideous looking vent right by my mailbox, that's not very appealing. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, they're, I'd have to, you know, they're, they're sticking up out of the ground. So, but I don't remember where all they go. Yeah. So the, the vents are about every 1500 feet or so, um, plus or minus. The vent pipe that does stick out of the ground. It has a concrete concrete apron around it. The pipe diameter is six inches and it sticks about four and a half feet high. So it is a it is a pipe sticking out of the ground. Um, looking at the plans to see how far they're spaced. I, I don't think that uh, I think the fifteen hundred feet gets us. So there's one right when we get into Alito Road. 
and then I think we skipped by all the the homes that are just to the you know closer to 2871. And then the next bin pipe is actually up against a road right of way. So we're mostly all against the railroad right of way again. So the first vent pipe is actually just right at Walnut Creek. So right when the the, uh, the line crosses Walnut Creek, there'll be a vent pipe. But again, it'll be on the south side of the road adjacent to the railroad right of way. Um, Do these pipes now uh, be considered as a hazard to motorists? So they may run off the road or? They're, uh, will be at or adjacent to the right of way or adjacent to existing fences. So it'll be mostly up against or, or along uh, you know, the overhead power line or where the existing fences are at. So they're outside of the clear zone of the roadway. Um, the, there is some flexibility in the exact locations where those go. The plans have them and they need to be within uh, public right of way. So, and the right of way is pretty tight through there. Um, but I, I think as construction progresses and uh, there can be discussions if, if those need to be adjusted, not the manhole location, but the actual location kind of from the manhole that needs to be vented to where they actually are set. Because uh, it's just a long vent pipe that can be kind of put wherever it needs to needs to go. As long as it's still connected to the to the manhole that's shown in the plans. So, at least the 1st few of us here on from 2871 um, down the Lido road. Our mailbox is on the opposite side of the road where you'll be digging. How would you accommodate that? Defer that to the contractor. Say that again one more time, sir. Our mailbox is on the south side of the road where you'll be digging up. So what is the accommodation for that? No, I think that's probably what Josh was speaking to is is we can we can tweak the location a little bit if we need to of the actual vent. Because we basically come off the manhole and we run a 6 inch pipe, you know, over to the location. They've got locations kind of shown on the plans is where they, you know, propose to put them. But if we need to shift them a little bit, you know, kind of like on an angle or something and get it away from a mailbox or anything like that. that that's not a, that's not a big deal. The 1st vents well beyond where I live. So that's not a right. concern. I don't, I don't want it to sound like I don't care because it doesn't affect me, but our mailbox is on the opposite side of the road. You're going to be digging up the south side of the road and due to the location of our mailbox, you will probably be destroying my mailbox. Yeah, so they they've got in the contract. The city does. I forget how many of them, but there's like 9, I believe, plus or minus uh, mailboxes that get removed and replaced. Because, like you're saying, by the time we go through there with this big equipment and as deep as we are, there, there's, they're going to be, they're going to get damaged. So we've got a, a subcontractor um, that we will use that'll redo all those things because most of you guys have them as like a, a brick or a, or a rock, you know, decorative type deal. So we'll have somebody that does that for a living, um, you know, and we'll coordinate with you so that you guys can kind of pick the rock and that kind of stuff. Make sure you guys are happy with how they get put back. But, um, but most there's a bunch how of those. Will, how, how will we receive our mail? We'll have to put up something temporary. We'll put a temporary mailbox in usually what we do. On the north side, on our side, uh, probably actually, yeah, you would have to. Yep. And what about deliveries like Amazon, FedEx, and things like that? Yeah, they'll we'll have to maintain that that same access that we keep for you guys to get to your houses. I mean, they're they'll they should know that you know if they've got a delivery there, you know they can get in there. So. So so it sounds like. You're you're kind of leaning more toward now after hearing some of our questions. There's going to have to be a screening process for people coming down the road, right? Yeah, um, yeah, it's kind of a hard thing as you can imagine. But you know, yes, there's a lot of people that kind of get turned away. So then, usually over time, it gets a lot better. But it's usually that that first week or two, it's more of a problem. Unless you can provide some sort of a window sticker for those of us that live here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, something that like that. That only help during the day, right? I mean, at night there won't be anybody there. So. Correct. Yep. 
But they'll be able to get depending through. on how much you widen the road. That could suck if you've got people who decide, oh, yeah, I don't care. I'm going to go this way and they're going the wrong way. And the people that are going the opposite direction get blocked because somebody decides they're going to go a wrong direction. Right. Yep. Hey, this is Rick Hatcher again from Tarrant County. I have one question. Under the traffic control plan that no one has seen yet, so I guess the contractor needs to answer this for me. Is it considered doing construction two-way traffic or one-way traffic going west? It, yeah, it's just one-way traffic going going west. Okay, because that would simplify a lot of everything for the residents who live on the north side of the Alito Road if it is yep. one way traffic going west and you move their mailboxes to the same side that way they don't have to cross over where the right is going. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's there's definitely only only the one lane. I mean with, with how this line where this line sits in the road and as deep as we are and all that kind of stuff, it, it's gonna be you know, take everything we can to just keep that one lane of traffic. And then, like you said, it's long enough that you can't, can't have cars going both ways. You know, people coming out of their driveways, everybody's just going to have to go West. Okay. And one other thing, and then I'll leave y'all alone until next week. <clears throat> Back under, uh, as far as the, the SWIFT program goes, our major point of contention is the spillway that's going under Alito Road. Okay, that has to be watched and maintained no matter what, because if, if anything happens to that spillway that goes under, you're going to back up all storm water on that north side. The ponds over there will not be able to handle it. Okay. So that's the one thing the contractor is going to have to watch out for and take a lot of care is that spillway going out because if that happens and then we have a big rain and storm like we just encountered a couple of weeks ago, that would be most miserable for everybody out there. It, no, I understood. And it, are you, well, you're, it sounds like you're talking about a specific location. Is that by chance, like where the, where Walnut Creek is? Oh, it may have a different name. There's a spillway because we just repaired part of it a couple of years ago, and I can't remember the exact address that it's in front of, where the, the ponds and the streams come together. Okay. And okay. they go over a spillway and go up under Lido Road to the south okay. side. Yeah, that, yeah that, that is the correct spot. In that area, we are, let me see what, we're boring under the creek. Yeah, uh, putting that, a tunnel in. Yep. Yeah, we're tunneling there. It's about, um, how long is that? 150 feet of tunnel. So we're yep. we're beginning quite a ways to the east and ending quite a ways to the west of that culvert, the spillway, uh, the head walls. That whole structure is going to be, um, you know, the disturbance will be all underground with a tunnel versus open cut. So there, it should be fairly well protected through there. Yep. Okay. Well, I'll save everything else for the pre-construction meeting. I also would like to encourage everybody to take pictures and videos of the property prior to construction, the mailboxes and everything with the date stamp so that we can look into it. Like if something happens, you know, during construction. So there's no other alternative to route this sewer line. No, that is. Yeah. Since we are going the public right of way. You couldn't, you cannot go on the. South side of the railroad track on Mr. Veal's property and run up that side. No, I'm afraid not. I know there's some gas lines already over there. Um, it would keep you from having to dig under 2871 twice if you went on the south side of the railroad track on his property. Yeah, we looked into all the option and that this was one of the most appropriate route that we found because we didn't require any easements is in public right of way. And this was one of the best route. That's why we chose this one. Okay. I don't know if I have any other questions. 
I'm not sure who asked the question about um, what development was going in. If you can see the chat, um, I put in contact information for a development services communications person. Her name is Natalie Foster. Does anybody need me to give you that phone number? And this is for to find out what developments are going in? They would know what's going in on Fort Worth. They may not know outside our ETJ. Um, her name, her phone number is 817-392-7824. Her name is Natalie Foster. All of these developments are outside Fort Worth city limits, right? Mm -hmm. She Walsh, may, does Walsh Ranch fall underneath the uh, Fort Worth city limits? Uh, yes, Walsh Ranch falls under Fort Worth city limits. See, I don't think anything along uh, Markham Ranch Road is is Fort Worth. It's all unincorporated. Right. right. But once you get past Markham Ranch Road, uh, the old Markham Ranch up there, is that still un in unincorporated? That Mike Dry owns now? It is, yep. It, the, turn, or, uh, City of Fort Worth doesn't begin until you get into Walsh Ranch. Okay. North of Lido. When did you plan on possibly starting this? Your best guess? We are thinking uh, the NTP to be April 17, but uh, I would like Adam to answer this question as well. Yep. Yeah, so middle of April, like she said, we'll, we'll be out there starting on the tunnels on the uh, east end of the project. And then we tentatively have a pipe crew scheduled to hit that job around the middle of May. Um, so they'll probably be out in Alito Road, you know, probably sometime between uh, 1st and middle of June, something like that. If everything, you know, if, if all the timelines hold and weather cooperates and we've, we've got to finish up a job where that pipe crew's at right now, but that's, that's tentatively what we're looking at. Um, there are a few tunnels down in Alito Road, like we were talking about earlier underneath the uh, Walnut Creek um, box culvert, um, but most of the tunneling on the job is over there on the on the east end. So they'll be over there for, for a while. They, we may be out there working on some tunnels probably as early as the middle of May, but I, I doubt it. It's probably more like the 1st of June. That uh, area on the, um, what I would call the north east corner that Fort Worth ISD owns, that's where you're going to be tunneling back underneath 2871. What is their intentions for that property? Do you know? No, we don't know about that. Okay. Would that be through Development Services Department? Probably, if it's not in Fort Worth, then um, I don't think Development Services would know. If you can look into the map that I'm showing right now, yes, we have Fort Worth City Limits. This is the boundary. You can see that, right? So right. that's Fort Worth. Between this is ETZ, and then there is another one section like right here, which is going to be in Fort Worth. So besides that, all of these is in ETJ. So we are not I sure what's going. Mm -hmm. I think he might be talking about across 2871 from on the east side of 2871. Yeah, on the yes. east side, uh, right. 2871 and Alito Road, that corner. Yes. Is apparently right, here? right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know about that since it's an EDJ. So, will there be any other meetings before construction starts? In case, I mean, once I'm kind of digesting all this information. Once uh, no, this, this is the only meeting that's going to happen before construction. But if you have any questions, you can always contact me or uh, you also have the information on our project inspector. I provided you uh, at the very front. So let me pull that back again. 
Okay. And yeah, you you can always email me or you can always call me. And then also you can contact Sally. She's our communication coordinator. Uh, she can put her information in the chat room right here. Okay. Yeah, so even yeah, Sally has provided all the information back here in chat again, like yeah, my email, my uh, yeah, phone number. And I, know, also. I know some people joined late. Um, could you tell everybody again how we can access the, the slides from the presentation with all the information? Yeah, Sally, can you please? Yeah, usually um, within two days after the meeting, which would make it uh, what Wednesday. We will have a PDF of the PowerPoint on the project page. So make sure you bookmark that project page. All you have to do is go to fourthtexas.gov and type in 103414 in the search bar and it'll take you straight to the page. Thank you. Uh, in regards to future, um, my understanding is we're gonna put an overpass over the railroad tracks. They initially, I believe, tried to start that or planned on starting at 2024. Is If that's true, is this going to impact uh, this project at the same time? Do you guys know anything about the overpass? Pretty, I can speak a little bit to that. Um, I know the county is building, um, I think it's under design currently, an extension of Bentley Road. Uh, that existing overpass of 20, that's going to extend south, basically just due south to Alito Road. As far as I'm aware, though, it's going to end at Alito Road, and there's no design or plan to build the overpass of the railroad. Likely. Oh, no. So I know, I know I looked at plans on how they were going to reroute traffic and exits and entrances on to that when the overpass went in. Right. So you may are you speaking about an overpass of I twenty or down by this, over this the is over road. the railroad track at Alito Road. Yeah, no, so I'm I I am not aware of if any uh design or construction timelines for that at all. I, I do know that Bentley is gonna be the road. I think the maybe the the one that I'm aware of is Bentley Road would be the one that's extending and would overpass the railroad eventually, but again, that's likely that there's no plans for the design or construction of that that I know of currently. Those yeah, are, hey, those this are. is Joseph Jackson, County Engineer. There, there, that road, Bentley Bridge Drive, is stopping at Alito Road. Um, however, we are setting it up for there to be an overpass, but there are no plans for an overpass this time. Yeah. Okay. Are they still? You still going to widen uh, twenty eight seventy one though? The four lanes. I'm not sure about 2871. That uh, that's a text dot road. So okay. okay, because that was supposed to widen from Interstate 30 all the way into Benbrook, go four lanes. Thirty, thirty, and come across twenty, and then go come in here to Benbrook with an overpass. And we can't wait for that. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, permitting this project with TxDOT, I uh, wasn't made aware of any widening projects in there, and none of those popped up, so I'm not sure that, that they have any right now, but that could be the case. Um, yeah, it's just well, they, they've got projected proposals out on, on what to do. Sure. Yeah, so we are boring under the railroad and the Lido Road, and then we're boring under um, 2871 as well. Yeah. Okay. So with that board, 2871 disrupt traffic? Would there be a disruption to 2871 traffic? There yeah, be, boring up under that? There should not be. Of course, there'll be some minor uh, real, uh, construction traffic coming um, off the roadway as needed, but they're tunneling under the road, so there'll be no, you know, no open cut of the lanes or uh, needing to reconstruct 2871 at all because they'll be tumbling underneath of it. Now we wouldn't be opposed at all if you stopped all the traffic on 2871. <laughs> as long as it didn't doesn't disrupt us. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. 
<laughs> a private road just for you guys. We might be able to get out of our neighborhood if, if we stopped all the traffic on 2871. Yeah, that's a nightmare now. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the traffic on 20 on Alito Road is going to be a single direction. You're not going to be widening the road to accommodate dual direction traffic. Correct. Okay, so our UPS delivery and FedEx delivery can only come from the from the east going to the west. Correct. Matter. I don't know if some of this construction and due to rain that may come in, how it will impact people getting mud and stuff all down their driveways and everything, trying to get to their properties. I don't know if you're going to try to do anything to help that situation. Well, yeah, you know, we're trying to keep the road as clean as we can. Um, but I mean, as you, as you know, I mean, it's, there'll be times where it's going to be muddy and all that. Yeah, if, so, and if you're yeah. putting asphalt to expand areas, that black's going to get up in a lot of people's driveways too. Right. Somebody might have to do a little cleaning. I can't think of any other questions that I have. I have a question. One of our residents cannot speak and she's asking, can I ask about the dry rant condemnation statement? I think pretty gave that statement possibly. Yeah, what, what does she want to know about the dry ranch condemnation? She just asked if you can ask about the dry ranch condemnation statement. Let me see if she texts me back to see okay. what the specifics. She can't, um, she has no no um, voice, so. Okay. I mean, she can't get, she can't talk, so. Um, I think I missed that. You might have given that pretty at the beginning of the meeting i guess i i, I don't want to hold y'all up but um i can probably yeah you can, uh -huh. yeah you can always email me i have yeah and you okay. know my email address so yes yes thank you uh -huh. i do have a question since i have since there are so many tarrant county people on the call uh, and I hate to bring this up here, but we are in a conversation with Mike Drive because of our wall that's supposedly sitting on his property. And it was wrecked two years ago, and we're trying to get our wall fixed. I saw someone from transportation out today doing some measurements and some surveying, I guess, to see, um, I guess, who owns the land that our wall is sitting on. I have the deed for that piece of property. And it looks like our wall might be protected based on the, the, um, the deed information that I saw. Is there anybody that can talk to me about terminology in the deed to see if we do have a chance to have our wall repaired? He wants to tear it down. And I have been fighting like crazy to get that wall repaired. And I need a resource that can help me with this in the county. Hey, Jan, that's probably going to be my office. Joseph Jackson. I'm, Joseph Jackson. Yes, okay. County engineer. Um, the best way is probably to send me an email. And I bet it was my survey crew that was probably out there collecting uh -huh. some data. Because I know we got a couple emails on this issue. Uh, um. <laughs> So, I've been emailing everybody. Yeah, well, maybe it may have been your email. I don't know, but um, <laughs> you can reach out to me directly and okay. uh, either myself or I might have the surveyor talk to you about the deed specifically. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see if there's a way to make sure you get my email address. Maybe I can put it in the chat. I'm on my iPhone, and if you hear a kid screaming, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. I, um, Mike, there was a Mike Webster at, at 
the entrance today and I did get a, a copy of a business card from the supervisor. Um, does that name sound familiar, Mike Webster? Mike Webster, yep, he's the, the, the crew leader. And then his supervisor is Robert Viscom. He's actually our survey, yes. who yes. I would refer you to anyway. So you might That's, call, well, he goes okay. by Bob. Call Bob first. Bob. And I will call see if Bob. if he can help you out. We were so glad to see them out today. So thank you very much. I'm sorry to interrupt the meeting with that question. <laughs> Absolutely. And I just, I just put your uh, email address in the chat. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks so much. Is there anything that we've missed? Any um, more questions? Preeti, I don't know if you wanted to mention or not, but something that would be uh, beneficial to the property owners, but there is a pretty extensive uh, tree protection plan in the in the construction plans that the contractor needs to adhere to. So you'll see uh, fencing going up around your trees along Alito Road um, with obviously the intention of the contractor to protect those trees and, and keep from damaging them. That's right. I mean, I guess you didn't miss anything, but in the end, I mean, obviously you're in the construction business. If this was your home, how would you feel if somebody was doing this in front of your house and the thought needs to be there? Okay, these people need to be dealt with fairly. Let's don't screw up their stuff. I know it doesn't happen intentionally, but things do happen. We are, we are trying to do our best to do a good job. So, I mean. I know there will be a little bit of disruption, but yeah, it's construction and we have to install the sewer main. So, I mean, yeah, there's going to be a phase, I guess. So, do we get to see any of these proposals that the contractors uh, submit for, you know, the water and, and, and or anything else that you guys are waiting for? Because there were lots of questions about things that it sounded like you guys don't even have the paperwork from the contractors for. Yeah, we can definitely share the traffic control plan and SW3P uh, as soon as we re receive that. And you can always, uh, this is my email address, you can send me your email address so that we can share it. I'm sorry, I have, uh, I was able to hear from the neighbor and she said that you're still tr trying to acquire the land, I guess from Mike Dry, and that's why y'all are waiting yeah, right there. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so that is for phase two. Yes, that is why we are doing two phases. Okay, so how do you how do you go about acquiring the land? That is why we are going through condemnation. Uh, the attorney is working on it, and okay. uh, I guess we'll uh, get a hearing date where everything will be settled. Okay, and you did say trash service would be able to come through. I don't know if everybody we have. Three different trash companies that come in Markham Ranch. I'm not sure about Alito Road, our neighbors over there, which trash service they use. The trash service should not be interrupted. That is correct. See, we don't have Fort Worth trash out here. Uh, yeah, I think that the corn the contractor will coordinate with you on the trash collection day, and if needed, they can um, get the trash uh, out in the other street, and then the trash vehicle can come and pick it up. Okay, because we have Republic, Sundance, and Frontier are the three garbage collection companies that we utilize here. Now, Stephen, um, I just on got Alito rid of, Road. I just got rid of Frontier, and I went with Sundance. That so, was so sweet. Okay, perfect. So we we could have potentially three different trash companies that that will need to be uh, communicated with. Okay, what are your pickup days? Well, they're different. Ours are on Friday for for Frontier. I think Republic is on Thursday. And Sundance, Stephen, can you speak to that? It was going to be Friday, but it's Thursday. So I don't. If there's Sundance in the neighborhood as well, I, I you know it can be Thursday or Friday. Mine's Thursday though. Yeah, I kind of think they're but it's everything is on Thursday or Friday. Okay. So hopefully. But yeah, but there's three different um, companies, and since we don't use Fort Worth, mm -hmm. we can contract with any of those three services. 
Sure, yeah. And again, uh, the contractor and the inspector will be out there and they will coordinate with you. And if uh, how, do, also, how do they coordinate? Do they come to the people's houses on Alito Road or how, how do they contact them? Sure. Adam, can you please answer that for her? Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we've got a superintendent that is assigned to the job and between him and, and Stephen, we'll, I'm sure we'll all get to know you guys pretty, pretty well and try to make sure um, that all these things, whether it's trash mailboxes, all the, the delivery stuff, we'll, we'll, we'll get through all this, but there'll probably be some one on one meetings out there with you guys okay. individually is the honest truth as to how that should be done correctly. Okay. Um, so we'll, there'll be some meetings out there with you guys. Well, I'm not shy to call if I've got issues. <laughs> I've heard horror stories where you've got a contractor and whoever the the old or you know the the supervisor or whatever they don't communicate and it's it's a mess. Hopefully that's not an issue. We're all very nice people. I promise. I am nice. I know we're all very nice people. I'm just not afraid to call. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. And no, you, you can also call the uh, project inspector as well. Uh, Stephen Martinez, he's in call as well. And his information, Sally has already given, but yeah, here is his information as well. Yeah, I was going to mention that Stephen may be a good resource to always loop in with conversations that you have with the contractor since he's working with the city. So this is Shannon Honeycutt. I live on Alito Road. Um, I was curious, you mentioned something about the trees that are um, going to be protected. How about the trees that are on our property that are rather large where the roots go underneath the road? If those trees are damaged on our property, is that something that you guys will be able to cover? So, um, we're just going through the plans. Uh, so, on the plans, we have all the trees to be protected. So, the aim is to protect all the trees. But uh, if something happens during construction, the contractor is always responsible to restore it. And, um, yeah, and you can always talk to the contractor if something happens or the inspector. Okay, I realize that those are the trees that are that are probably you're speaking of on the on the uh, south side of the road, correct? That is correct. Okay, north I'm side. speaking so of- That includes the north side trees as well. And I know, um, Shannon, you have a very large tree that- Yes. That goes over Alito Road. That, I do. frankly, will be a challenge. It could be a challenge, depending on the size of the uh, equipment that's needed. Construction, though, of the line is on the- the, uh, my directions mixed up again. It's on the south side of the road, so right to be on the opposite side of where that tree is at. Um, I think I'm just curious as if just because I, I mean, it's such an old tree that I know the roots probably extend out under the road. Yeah, so the line itself is, I would say, it's be just beyond the drip line of the trees, so it would usually be outside of the critical root zone areas of. Of that size of tree, um, okay. but it's very close. So yeah, I mean that there is a, a chance that 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 tree could be affected. I I think it arches up high enough so that the equipment should be able to still operate underneath it, but there may need to be a little bit of trimming. Um, okay. Is there going to be any chemical fallout from the equipment that will get into the dirt and affect the root ball? Is there something you can do about that? That's a contractor question. I would certainly hope that there's not any chemical spills coming off their equipment. <laughs> I hope not either. <laughs> well, then you've got ash issues. There is a plan for 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 that too, right? Yes, there is. So I, I'm so looking at. Are you? Is that another one of the things that you're waiting for from the contractor? 
pretty I, I'm not exactly yeah. sure. Adam, are you are you still in the meeting? Yeah, sorry, I just got home uh, and I've got five little kids. So sorry, what was that? Is that so is there an ash plan on you know for <clears throat> like uh who was this bill? Yeah, equipment spills. You know, like the, the lady was just talking about, she's concerned about her nice big old tree that overhangs um, Alito Road. So let's be real. You can't tell me that there's not going to be chemicals that are potentially going to be spilled from the equipment. You know, not on purpose, obviously, but are there there ash plans on cleanup or to address issues that may happen somewhere? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, and our guys keep, you know, some of that type of stuff on hand, you know, it, it you if it happens, it's usually around the the fuel tank. Um, you know, but but we have there's things put in place to to, you know, minimize that kind of stuff. It doesn't happen very very often. But there there's not a lot of with this type of construction, there, there's really not a lot of you know, chemicals that we use. It's mostly related to the equipment. Fuel and oil and that kind of stuff. Okay, anything else you guys can think of? Did everybody get uh, the contact information for Preeti and Steven and myself? In the chat, Jan. Let me double check something with you. Okay. Um, I've got yourself, Sue Crawford, and Mindy Rios. Yes. Okay. What I now? will email. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You said you had what for us? I'm sorry. I'll email all three of you once okay. we've got that uh, project page updated. Okay. Perfect. All right. Now Thank let you. me ask. Uh, Benbrook is the one who delivers our mail. Will they know ahead of time that there's going to be a delivery issue on Alito Road, or or will they just find out when the, the signs go up? I know that we did invite them to the meeting, so they're aware of the project. Preeti, can you elaborate? Okay. Sorry, what was that? Well, the post Bembrook is the post office that delivers our mail. And is there communication to them specifically, or how will they know that this construction is starting? And yeah, uh, you can always reach out to the post office, and I will always um, I can contact them. Okay. And see, yeah, I, I'll yeah I'll give them a call, or I will find their information and contact them. Okay, and how far in advance did you say the signage would go up to let people know the construction is about to start? Uh, Adam, could you answer that? Uh, yeah, I mean, City of Fort Worth usually has us do it like a week or two, usually a couple of weeks on most projects is when they go up. Okay. So, and we can usually just program them, just kind of give everybody a heads up as to what's about ready to happen before we put all the information on there about the detours, you know, okay. specifics. So. Okay. Well, I really appreciate all the time and effort y'all have taken in um, to help us understand and answer our questions. We seem to not have many voices out here and a lot of things happen before we even know they're happening. So I just want to thank you for um, being available to us and answer our questions and calm our nerves, especially to our neighbors on Alito Road. It's not going to be fun, but um, hopefully we're going to hope for the best. And, um, you know, looking forward to seeing the progress. Thank you so much, everybody, for your time. I really appreciate uh, your time attending this meeting. And you can always reach out to me. Uh, here is my contact information, the project inspector, Stephen Martinez, as well as uh, Sally. And um, we'll try to make it as much as painless during construction. So hopefully, you know, we will fly, fly through this. We'll just have to pack our patients. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. I'll take. Thank Thanks, you. everyone.